Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to take a look at this stereo cassette player from Sanyo and it's the model M4440 all the way from around 1981. Now, regular viewers to the channel will know that I've got a bit of a fascination with Sanyo personal stereos and it all kind of started for me back as a kid when I had a red MGP9. That was kind of a poor man's Walkman, I guess. It didn't have anything special on there. No auto reverse, radio, graphic equaliser, no rewind button even. It was very basic. But anyway, that kind of spurred me on into sort of collecting stuff in later life. So I've also got the M3330, which I featured on the channel recently with the belt changer and service. Plus also the M4430, which is the kind of predecessor to this one. And I did give a quick overview of this one on that video uh, insofar as this one's got a counter, which the other two don't have. Anyways, I kind of figured now would be a nice time to kind of celebrate this one and show it off a little bit and explain what was in the box. Because I did manage to get something to complete my little set here. Now, I've had this a little while and it was pretty much complete, to be honest. It's got a lovely instruction book in there kind of like a two color book but nice photographs really thick really well made beautiful thing but also this particular one has the cassette pouch that used to go over the strap which is still in its bag has never been opened or anything it literally is like new it really is new there's a, a little label product label here as well about the tape speed there we go so that's how to adjust with the pitch control that's a little reminder there of how that works then it comes with a strap and this again is brand new still sealed in its bag never been opened now i'll come to this side in a moment but here's the main unit again in its original bag and then we have the case now quite fortunately a lot of these particular stereos were kept in their case for most of their life which really helped keep them clean and tidy because they haven't got a self-coloured finish they're like a almost like a metallic fleck in the plastic so you have to be careful you can't really polish it up once it's got too scuff but as you can see this one's really clean and tidy you've got your six volts negative pin inlet there for your dc if you want to there's your little bars for carrying the carry strap and I've talked about the features on a previous video with the M4430, but essentially you've got your stop and play, fast forward and rewind, which work as a cue and review. You've also got a pitch control there, which actually gives you quite a good scope. I can't remember the exact percentage, but it really gives you quite a decent uh, range of pitch there if you need it for any reason. Plus, you've also got a tone switch just there for low and high. So basically like a, a two band kind of EQ, really, I guess. But on the top, you've got your headphones, your single master volume there, balance control for left and right. You've also got a torque switch here. And what that does is on previous models, there was like a mute button that attenuated the sound so you could talk to people when you had your headphones on and release it. This particular one is actually a latched switch. So when you turn the torque on, it activates an inbuilt microphone just there. So you can pick up ambient sound and hear what people are saying to you when you've got your headphones on. Speaking of headphones, and we'll come back to this unit in a moment, but speaking of headphones, these are the headphones that it would have come with. These beautiful E333s, as you can see here, really quite big actually for their time and quite unique ear cushions as well. Lovely bit of kit, this one. Very nice. Not very often that they actually come complete with the headphones, to be honest, but they are quite unique and specific, I believe, to this model. So it's quite nice to have them as well. But anyways, the reason I'm making a video today really is because I managed to get hold of this. Now, this was the only thing that was missing from the box. And it's the demonstration tape that would have come with this unit originally. And hot escort on one side. And on the other side is give me the music. Now, what I will do, I think, is actually take a line out and maybe make an MP3 recording a bit later so you can hear what's actually on this. And I'll tag that on the end of the video, I think. But the thing is, you see, when you see the original, the original uh, black and white photograph there from the cover, you see that hot escort tape was actually in there. And uh, 
so it's never quite right if it's not with the unit it's always just such a shame if it's missing so i'll actually be making uh, duplications of these i'm going to actually make replicas of these and get the stickers made up and stuff just for a bit of fun as well so that if i'm restoring and refurbishing the m triple three zeros and m triple four zeros then i'll be able to put the tape in with it but this is an original one it literally arrived this morning so i won't store it inside the tape in fact that was my plan i thought it would live inside the actual tape when it's when it's actually in the box however this particular one does come with its spool locks there look so i don't think it would actually normally live in the t in the player there is room for it in the box so i will put that in the box along with the headphones and the strap the pouch and the instructions and move those to one side because now we'll take a quick look at the unit and then i reckon we'll give it a spin see if it actually works or not before we go ahead and fit the belts the reason i'm fitting the belts really is just a bit of a celebration of the unit because i've got all the parts i need for the set now and this one was already mostly complete the serial numbers match on the box and on the unit itself so be a shame not to uh, treat it to some new belts even though i probably won't be playing it that often just be a nice thing to do so here's the unit without its case of course and you can see the counter there and that counter is the only thing that differentiates it really between that and the 4430 there we go so that's that battery contents are okay nothing spilled or leaked out in there but um i think what we'll do is just try it anyway see see how it sounds see if it is working okay i honestly don't know i bought this as a set because it was mostly complete but never actually tried it out so i've got my jsx 37 sanyo speakers here which oddly enough when you when you can feel the weight and the heft and the build quality of this compared to the mgp9 that these sorts of things would have come with you can really tell the difference in sort of quality but anyways well let's uh, let's see if we can get this working so headphones there i've got the power supply as i say six volts negative pin I'm going to pop that in there, press play. All right, so the, the, rule, the, the reel is turning, so that's great. And I'll put a cassette in as well, and we'll just see if it works. So let's have a look. Okay, and I'm going to do left to right. Okay, so the balance works. The talk button does attenuate the volume a bit as well. And also there's hardly any scratching on the volume part, nothing that won't just polish out. The headphones are nice and stable. There's no crackling or loss there. So that's great. There's no problem with the contacts on the board. And I've got to be honest, I don't think it even needs he says and i was gonna say i don't think it even needs new belts i was gonna do it anyway just to show you guys how to do it but yeah it's it, it's okay now i think it just needed waking up because it's not been used obviously for some years and we may see that when we do the belts we'll probably find that they're quite teardrop shaped let's just test the q and review ah all right there we go Yeah, so it's happy on rewind, but fast forward, it's kind of slipping a bit. It's mind you, it always struggles. To, it's never quite as good in fast forward as a rewind, of course. But uh, yeah, but nonetheless. I think now's the time to change it. It looks like everything works. It needs a bit of a deep clean as well. To be honest, I've never had this polished or anything like that. So we'll clean the head, we'll clean the capstan, the pinch roller, 
Um, I won't bother cleaning the switches because they seem to all be nice and uh, nice and trouble free. So yeah, let's uh, let's get all these other bits and pieces out of the way and start changing the belts. I think. So here we go with the belt change then on the Sanyo M triple four zero. Now these really don't get done very often at all. Whenever I sell any of mine. I always make sure I change the belts and I also generally give them a deep clean and a service as well. Although we're just going to focus on the belt change for demonstrative purposes today. To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen any on eBay or anywhere like that that have been serviced. People sell them on as working in inverted commas. Now, it's, I guess that's one stage up from so-called untested insofar as they might power on and they might play to a degree but trust me every single one of these i've had triple three zeros four four three zeros triple four zeros i've probably worked on about 40 or 50 of them and i've never ever come across one that's been serviced so just goes to show so you've got three belts all together then on this the larger one is the main drive belt you've got the thicker one that goes beneath the flywheel for transport and then you might not see it just yet but there's a very very thin counter belt as well just in there and that really is tiny that one so the first thing you want to do is put it on a flat level surface so you don't scratch the uh, the front of the unit and we'll remove the battery cover and there are five screws four are the same one inside the battery compartment these three on the back case and then the fifth screw is a tiny one just in that corner so we'll get them out now see that one really is very tiny not quite as tiny as the screws in, in today's appliances iPhones and stuff like that but nonetheless about as small as they were back then for a consumer product now the small screw in the battery compartment has actually been a bit troublesome to get out and I'm not going to dig around with tweezers and risk scratching around there it's out but it's kind of captive and all we do is lift the back cover clear might see the little screw there. I'm just going to tip it out now. There it is at last. <laughs> so, yeah, five screws. The back cover's got nothing on it. There's no radio, of course, in this. So, just the, uh, the little battery strap there. And that gives us the inside of the unit. So, once we're inside, I'm just going to have a look at the belt condition. And it does feel a little bit loose, but not too bad. Right, basically what we want to do is we've got one, two, three and four screws to remove. But first we've got to get the shield plate off. So we withdraw the shield. And then we've got four screws which are identical to themselves, or should I say each other. So it's a bit like nines and nines working on this. So far we've got nine screws out. We had four from the back and one on the bottom, so that's five. And then four from the circuit board makes nine screws. We then need to remove nine cables from the circuit board yep nine you may be able to do it with less but i find it's easier just to get on with it and get them off and then rather than trying to fight i think you probably wouldn't be able to do it with less to be honest but essentially what we have is there's a capacitor up by the headphone jack up here that's got to come off then we've got the orange and red from the side we've got the blue and the red that come up from the battery compartment We've got the power in here, the black and the red. Plus also, you generally have to get rid of the blue and the white. And I'll just come in to show you again in a second. But there's a blue and a white one that come from the leaf switch. And they actually come through this hole in the board. And so you'll find that even if you get all the others off, you try and peel the board back. And these cables aren't long enough. So you need to... Uh, you need to basically get those off as well. But I bring that just in closer so you can see now. 
So essentially, there's a capacitor that's got to come off of there. Then you've got orange, red, red, blue, red, black. And then through this hole just here, you'll see the white and you may see the blue. They're very, very tiny and they go up under there. So all I'm going to do now is just go ahead and desolder all of those. It is always worth as well. This sponge tends to perish, but you will need to remove the head cable. Wow, that one's OK, because it will come away and give you some extra slack later. So just carefully tease away and keep safe. Any little bits of tape and we'll redo those once we put everything back together again. And I think I might have pressed stop instead of start on the camera just then. So you might have missed all of that. But essentially, all of those are now away, with the exception of the capacitor just in this top corner. Which can be tricky. Come on. There we go. And it has to be said that some of these cables are ridiculously, ridiculously thin and tiny. So you could use a microscope for this. I don't have one, but uh, it would certainly get into that stage where it would be helpful. But anyways, what you've got to do now is peel the, peel the cables gently away from the board. All of the screws are away. So it's just a case of wiggling it, lifting it clear of the posts and Remember to move the board away from the pitch control on that bottom corner. That's the easiest way to start. And then the rest should just float out like so. There we go. I'll just zoom out a bit. There we go. And you may have seen as I did that, that the, the blue and white ones from the leaf contact that we just desoldered, they sort of then slide out through the little square square hole. And that basically just allows you to open it a bit like a book. So there we go. So we can see the uh, we can see the electronics in there. We can get to the potentiometers to clean them if we so required. Yeah, all good stuff. So there we go. Also, the capacitors are quite easy to get to and to change on this as well. So being like the big unit that it is, you can actually still get to everything fairly easily if you wanted to if you needed to change transistors or any of the caps, you can get in there and do that. But anyways, there we go. So let's just take a closer look now then at the mech. It's very simple to change the belts on this. Now you can see probably that you've got the main drive belt just here. The secondary belt you may or may not see because it's black belt against a black background, but that goes around this wheel here and drives that one from the bottom of the flywheel. And then finally, the third one, this is tiny, tiny little, there you go, tiny little counter belt just there. Fragile little thing, but does the job. Right, so if we wanna get these belts off then, basically we need to undo two screws there's no need to change the uh, the thrust clearance there. You can feel just a tiny amount, and that's set just nicely. So basically, we've got to get this screw out here. And you can use a little drop of acetone if it's locked in too far. Sometimes there is quite a lot of thread lock on there. So, and then we just get the idler away with this screw here careful because this one is sprung loaded this little carriage so there's a little screw and a top hat there and as i say be careful because there is a spring under there all right so this kind of does all the business while you're there now i will get some rubber renew on there in a minute and clean up this rubber it actually looks okay it's in good condition it's not dry it's not perished or cracked but nonetheless, we'll give that a bit of a, a bit of a zhuzh, a bit of a clean. But for now, we'll put it to one side and get ready to change the belts. Now I'm using these 
Manatree DT belts, Deck Tech today. They're not sponsoring the video, but to be honest, they're just brilliant belts. And I use them for all my decent kit. So I've got three belts to go on, which are just here, fresh out the bag. And we'll get the other ones off. Now we'll show you how easy it is to get them off now. And all we do is we slip the main drive belt off of there. Now you can see that it is a bit deformed. You can see a slight tear drop in and where it's been around the motor spindle. So it is always worth replacing them. You are going to get some wow and flutter. And these are lovely machines. They're robust machines and they're beautiful sounding machines and quite, quite loud, quite powerful. But again, you know, yes, did it work? Yes, it did. But did it work at its best? Not with that belt. So we'll lose that one. Then the next one we can lose, well, actually, we'll lose the counter belt while we're here, just because we, we can get straight to that one. And that literally is as easy as that. And again, you can see it's been stood for a while because it is sort of elliptical. And it does want to keep going back to being an ellipse as opposed to a circle. So it's probably outstayed its welcome, even though it's not so critical for a counter belt. Always better to replace that. So that's the second one out. And then the third one is underneath the flywheel. I'm not going to get the flywheel out to oil it today, um, but it can just lift it marginally because what that will allow us to do is slip that out from there and underneath and the third belt is out. Again, elliptical and you can see that it bounces back out of shape. So they, they were all due, due doing, even though technically it worked. And also, of course, it wasn't fast forwarding very well. And I think that's because the, uh, the belt had done its kind of dry, shiny thing and was starting to slip. And obviously, if it's out of round as well, you'll get, you'll get sort of tight spots, as it were, and looser spots on there. So when it tries to spin up, it, it's not going to work properly. So there we go. So that's three belts that are off. And then we've got three belts to put back on but just before i forget these cables are looking at me and how they ever make contact without any wire sticking out the end i never know with these so i just like to trim just a couple of millimeters off the end just to expose a bit more fresh a bit more fresh wire so we can solder them back on nicely later right then next job Let's just give these pulleys a quick clean. We don't really need to, insofar as the belts weren't really perished, per se. So they're not gooey or nasty in here, but it's just nice sometimes to just check that your pulleys are nice and clean. Make sure there's no residue or anything in there that shouldn't be. Yeah, they're pretty good, to be honest. And we only want to be gentle fragile plastic gears in here so just take it steady and of course the rubber renew nasty stuff so be careful with that but essentially just using a fresh cotton bud and just going around the edge Just taking off any nastiness. Yeah, pretty clean. I suspected it's not too bad at all, but it's always worth doing whilst you can get to it. All right then, let's get on and put these new belts in. So I think the first one will be the nice chunky one underneath. So we'll get that one over there. You probably won't be able to see it very well. Making a bit of a dog's breakfast over it, trying to let you see what's going on, but essentially that's up there. So there's no twists in that. That's running beautifully. Very nice. Yep, running freely, but not slipping at all. That's fantastic. We'll get the tiny little counter belt on because this is going to be a bit fiddly. It might sound obvious, but you've got to make sure you get it over the pulley. These 
pulleys are so tiny that uh, you just have to make sure that they are actually in the groove and not slipped underneath. And then finally, the main drive belt from the motor. And again, avoid any twists in the belt and thread that on like so. Spin it up a few times to make sure there's no twists in it. And we're away. So you can see now if I hold the motor spindle, nothing wants to go. And if I turn any of the other components, you can see they all want to start turning. So that's beautiful. Good. Well, that's the belts on. At this juncture, you can do all the other stuff. You can go in there and give things a deep clean. If your mech is sticking, you can get to access to parts of it to lube it and whatever here. But we don't need to do any of that today. So I'm just going to put it all back together again, solder it up, and I'll see you on the other side. So here it is then, the Sanyo M4440. So what started out with finishing off the collection with this particular tape today has ended up in a nicely serviced, beautiful personal stereo. In fact, always like the look of these, really robust, really solid, really rugged. And I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to show you how to change all three belts. I've also cleaned the head, the caps in the pinch roller, just checked over the switches generally and everything's working beautifully. So we'll have a quick listen and then I think what we might do is play it properly so you've got a better idea of how it should sound. But for now, let's have a quick listen through these JSX just to see if they're working. And hopefully we'll get some music. Here we go. Brilliant. So if we, there we go, cue a review. And that's pulling really strongly now. Much better. I'll just show you this pitch speed as well. So you can see that the pitch actually is quite uh, quite varied on that really. But anyway, the belts are working beautifully. They're fast forward and rewinding nice and strong. It's running off its batteries just there. The Q and review sounds good. The counter belt is working. You may just see that there if I just bring you in. So we're on what, 12, fast forward, stop, rewind. Good stuff. So those deck tech belts really are doing the trick. So there you go, that's the Sanyo M4440. What I'm gonna do now though, I think is plug the unit through uh, some capture software and we'll actually have a listen, shall we? Just to see what's on this demo tape. Won't take long. If you aren't interested in that, then that's fine. Then tune away now. But thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon. Please do consider subscribing and hitting the bell for updates. But for anybody else that's interested in knowing exactly what's on this tape, we'll just let the next five or ten minutes just run out of uh, the music that's on the original cassette that came with this and I believe the M3430. Anyway, all the best for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.
Well, hello if you're still with me. This is like a bonus hidden track at the end, I guess. Um, I've just been recording those two songs there, those tracks, and it, it just struck me as how compressed that they were. Everything was very flat. I mean, there's literally no processing. I've been fair and honest as far as I can to the actual cassette player and the tape itself. There's a little bit of hiss in there, and I don't think the tape is that very much worn, but I think there's a lot of compression on it when it was when it was actually recorded, you can see kind of how flat the whole thing is. And also so busy. There's really not a lot of light and shade in the songs at all. It really is full on just showing you, you know, the separation, the drums going off and keys and all sorts of stuff. So it's like a full on, although they're only a couple of minutes long, it's a, it's a pretty much an audio onslaught really. So they really want to get you to show, you know, they want to show you, I should say, how wonderful their, their tapes are. But as I say, not massively dynamic in that respect. It's kind of, as soon as you press play, it's just kind of like full on flat out all the way to the end. But I guess that's what they needed to do back then, just to keep you interested. But anyway, there you go then. So that is the uh, that is the wonderful little demo tape there. That was side two and also side one we had from the uh, from the demo tape that came with it. Don't uh, give me the music and hot escort. So I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, like I say, I'd be amazed if anybody's actually watching this. This is like a secret little bit that I'm just sticking in at the end of the video. But in any event, there you go. That was quite interesting. So I've got loads more boomboxes and Walkmans and stuff coming. And I think it should be quite good fun just to share the contents of these demonstration tapes. I'm also looking at uh, recreating them as well. So that people who have got these models, I'm looking at basically 
you know, sort of scanning the labels and getting some some simple C15s or something and, and making little replicas of them. Just out of interest, actually, that just while you are here, and I know I'm whittling on a little bit, but like I say, it's a bit of a bonus bit at the end. Um, if we just, if I, let me just have a look here. If I now play back one of the tracks that was just on, and if we take it from, right, so that's the leader tape just coming in, and you'll just get to hear it in real life, as it were. <laughs> Turn it down a bit and if we go to the second track so yeah there's obviously a bit more bass in through the speakers than than you know you might think however um I guess overall it's not a bad sound. I think it's pretty good actually. I think through this uh, through the headphones, it's actually quite a nice, rich sound actually. So I've done no processing at all. I mean these these particular channels are you know there there's nothing. There's no compression. There's no there's no reverb. There's no EQ at all. So what you're getting is exactly what came off the tape itself, plus obviously off the player as well. So anyway, there we go, enough whittling on. I'll um, I'll see you soon, but thanks very much for sticking it out this long and take care, all the best for now. Bye-bye.